Hello everyone, I hope you're having a wonderful day. My name is Scott Collins and I will be taking you through the fourth physics 2.11 lab. In this video, I will go through the purpose of this lab, explain key concepts, show you the experiment and analyze the computational model using GlowScript, and I will show you results and explain. Answer lab questions and conclude. In this lab, we are going to examine the motion of a spring mass system in which the mass swings in an arc while oscillating on a spring. We will compare predicted model and observed model Compute energy changes showing changes in kinetic energy, gravitational potential energy, and spring potential energy. There will also be graphs that shown in each part to show the data at the end. So key concepts. First, we're going to need to know the momentum principle, better known as Newton's second law. In the past labs, we used Newton's second law, and it will be important in this lab as well. The law states that force applied to an object is directly proportional to the rate of change of its momentum, and it occurs in the direction in which the force is applied. We know this as force equals mass times acceleration, and we can derive that as change in momentum over change in time. Next, we need a velocity update formula, which is V final equals V initial plus F net over mass times delta T. We also need the position update formula, which is final position equals initial position plus our average velocity times our delta T. Next, we have spring equations. Uh, we're gonna need this one later to find L naught. We also have this equation, which helps us find our spring constant. We're also going to need energy principle equations. One, one equation I left off with solar energy is change of initial change in potential energy plus change in kinetic energy. We have kinetic energy is one half mass times velocity squared or change in velocity squared. Gravitational energy is going to be mass times gravity times change in y, or position, and we're going to use, and change in spring potential energy is one half spring constant times s squared. In this lab, we know that the mass of the ball is 0 0.402 kilograms, and the length is 0 0.7 meters. The system is a spring, earth, and gravity, and it has no surroundings. Here is the video of the oscillating object. Time of the video was 9.48 since that was the time since the time he released it and it stopped. The initial position was negative 0.143 for x and negative 0.768 for y, and the initial and the initial velocity in both directions was zero. Delta t we got 0 0.005 by looking at the time at each x value and subtracting. To find t, we looked at the peak of the graph and subtracted one by the previous one to get 1.524 meaning this. And then we were able to plug that into the spring equation from earlier to get our spring constant of 6.83. And we plug that into our other spring equation to find L naught, which was 1.23. Here's our computational model using Glow script. We had to change the ball mass and the initial position for the values we found earlier. Then I inserted gravity and the spring constant here that we found from using this equation and the L naught from using this equation. With that, we gotta find L and L hat, which would give us our S value. <laughs> then we plug in that S into our energy equations, which we found earlier as these. Then we have to find initial energies here. We use, find this, the spring force, the net force, we use the velocity update formula and position update formula, so it would update our object. Lastly, we gotta get delta K, our change in gravitational, change in spring, and change in total energy. This first image is the movement of the object, the blue lines showing how the object moved throughout the experiment. First graph is the energies computed. We can tell that this is correct because total energy, the orange one is zero throughout the time. Next is the experimental versus computational. You can see that our data is not exactly like the computational, but it is pretty similar, but not terrible. There are some dips in the Y graph, but I think that's due to the CSV file I updated and put it in the Excel. So it would be moved up and it would look pretty much like this one, but it would look better. Every lab has some type of error, rounding, error, human error, misunderstandings, all type of errors. Personally, in this lab, I think my error was the Excel sheet, and not considering other forces such as drag, thermal, all those other types of error. What does this mean? For your model system, is the energy principle satisfied? Yes, as we said earlier, the total energy is zero. We know that because potential energy equals kinetic energy, and it should be zero. We can also look at the graph and see this orange line is always zero, and yeah. Compare x position t and y position t. T for X, we had 1.635, and for T for Y, we had 1.450. There are different values because of some type of error we had, as stated earlier. It would be 
exact values, like the same values, such as in this one, but because we had an error, that's okay. Um, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something from this lab. Um, until next time, thank you.